Hello friends, I am Shivaji Bhaskar, Faculty of Russian at the School of Foreign Languages, IGNU. I welcome you all to this module of the course Basics of Russian Communication Skills Part 1. As you know that we have been discussing about certain concepts of the Russian language and initially with the help of Russian alphabet we have identified several letters. Then we distinguish them as vowels and consonants and sign. We have also seen that with the combination of certain letters we have a few words which we are using in our communication. Since in the last module we have discussed about the genders of the Russian language as you know we have masculine, feminine and neuter gender. So as a technique which we discussed last time we have moi, maya, mayo and mai. In order to have any noun along, for example like druk, padruga, akno, and same is the case with plural. So we will be having certain words with us, depending on their gender, we will be changing these possessive pronouns. So here you can see we have in the masculine, moi druk, tvoi brat, nash gorad and vash karandash. In feminine, we have maya padruga, tvaya mama, nasha strana, nasha kniga. Whereas in the neuter, we have mayo akno, tvayo akno, nashe zdanye, vashe zdanye. And when we are changing into plural, for example, in case of moi, maya, mayo, and my depending upon the ending of the noun we are changing them into plural the first case is my gazette so gazette is a plural form of gazeta and gazeta means newspaper belongs to feminine gender but while changing into plural it is becoming my gazette now we have another example toy journali here, journal, it is of masculine gender. But when we are changing into plural, it becomes Tvai journali. Likewise, we have Nashi stranni. It's from the word strana, means country, belongs to feminine gender. But while changing them into plural, it becomes Nashi stranni. And here you have one example of neuter gender, zdanya. It's changing into vashi zdanya. So here you have to pay attention while in plural you may find certain endings like in case of vashi zdanya ending with ya. But it does not belong to feminine gender because it is a plural of a neuter gender word. Zdanian. So these are certain concepts which you need to keep in your mind in order to communicate in Russian properly and my suggestion to you all is to write them down in your notebooks so that you prepare yourself well in advance when we are going to discuss it while having question and answers. So let's go ahead and pay attention to the screen. Here we are going to Read the question and answer while paying attention to the intonation. As you know, intonation plays a very important role in the Russian language because as per the intonation only, you only need to know that whether the person is asking a question or answering the question. So you have interrogative, affirmative, so now we will see that how it works. We have the first one, Etavasha Machina. So now I'm going to ask a question. So you will see that how the tempo, the sound, the pattern, 
at the end rises. Eta washa machina, because I am asking a question. So at the end, the pitch of the sound is rising. Now I need to answer it. All right. So what should I do? I can use da eta nasha machina. Da eta maya. Da maya. Da eta maya machina. Da nasha. Da eta nasha machina. So for one answer, you have a variety of expressions. You can use any one of them in order to answer the question. Now let's go to the next part and look at the sentence. Eta vasha strana da maya. Da eta maya strana da nasha da eta nasha strana. Likewise, you have the next sentence. Eta vasha akno da mayo. Da eta mayo akno da nasha da eta nasha akno. And likewise, the last one. Eta vasha gorad da moi. Da eta moi gorad da nash. Da eta nash gorad. So here you can see as per the gender of the noun, the question is also being changed. Like we are using vasha for strana, vasha for akno, vash for goral, and in the beginning we have used vasha for machina. All right. So here we need to pay attention to the ending of the words. So like machina, feminine gender, that is why vasha, strana, also feminine gender, that is why vasha, akno, neuter gender, that is why vashe, and goral, that is why we have vash, because it belongs to the masculine gender. So I hope this important aspect is clear to you. Now we will move ahead and go to the next part. Here you will see again, we are going to discuss certain possessive pronouns like yivo, yo, ik, which remains unchanged irrespective of the gender of the noun they qualify. What does it mean? Let's pay attention to the sentences we have so that you have a fair idea about them. For example, eta yivo dom, and if you pay attention to the screen, in place of ge there is a change in the sound and sound of ve comes because it is also devoicing yivo dom eta yivo dom this is his house eta io dom eta io dom io her this is her house eta yivo padruga this is is female friend. Eta yo padruga. This is her female friend. Eta yivo pismo. This is his letter. Eta yo pismo. This is her letter. So here you can see that how yivo and yo remains unchanged. However, the nouns, whether it is masculine or feminine, it remains in the form as is it. So now we will look at the next part and see that how the use of ik can be qualified. Eta ik dom, this is their house. Eta ik padruga, this is their female friend. Eta ik pismo, this is their letter. So here, in place of yibo, yo, we are changing into plural, so there. All right. So I would also like to suggest you to remember that the presence of vowel sounds ya, ye, yo, u, and e shows that the preceding consonant is soft. Let's look at the examples where we can understand. So we have this clarity about these certain sounds, which we just did with the example of yivo, yo, and with certain nouns, 
where we have got the example as per their genders. Now let us pay attention to the certain sounds which are hard and soft. They belong to the hard and soft consonants that is why we will see the examples first where it is a combination of consonants plus vowels like la, lya, ta, cha, da, ja, na, nya. Let us go ahead and look at a few more examples. Lo, lyo, to, chyo, do, jo, no, nyo. Alright, here you have seen that how the sound of these consonants when combined together with vowels are changing. Now let us go ahead and look at a few more such combinations. In this part, you can see that how the sound of consonants are changing. Now let us go ahead. Here you have li, li, tu, chi, du, ji, mu, and ni. Okay, let us go ahead and see some of a few more examples. Okay, now let us pay attention to this combination of consonant and vowels. We have lu, liu, tu, chu, du, ju, nu, niu. Okay, now let us go ahead. Here we have seen that how the sound of lu, li, tu, chi, du, di, mu and ni are coming. So, this is an important exercise we do in order to make you understand that how the sound of hard consonants are being used when combined with vowels. Alright, let us go ahead and see some of a few more examples. Le, le, che, te, de, je, ne, ni. Okay, now let us go ahead and here we have certain words where these consonants are being used and you can pay attention to the pronunciation of these particular words in order to identify the letter individually and when it is being used in these words. So, the first word is chext, then chiocha, karchina and jevushka. So now let's learn the meaning of these words. Chext means text. Chiochia means aunt. Karchina means picture. And Jevushka means girl. Now we have a few more words with us like Jechi, Jadushka, India, Rajo. Here you can also see that these words are having udarini or the stress sign on a particular vowel that is why the pronunciation of these words are coming like this. So now let us learn the meaning of these words. Jechi means children, Jedushka means grandfather, India means India and Rajyo means radio. If you remember that in the previous part we have also done certain words which have an equivalent. For example, like babushka. Babushka means grandmother. So, we have jedushka means grandfather. So, that is why these kind of vocabulary which we are doing is very important where you can use these words like babushka, jedushka, brat, sestra, mama, papa in order to make a very small text where you can write about your family and as we say family is simia in Russian. We shall also be discussing about them in our upcoming modules but before that let us cover certain other concepts. Alright, now we have certain other words with us. We shall be discussing about them as well 
and let's pay attention to the position of udareni on certain vowels and pay attention to the pronunciation of these specific words confieta firma philosopher professor alpha vit so here you can see that udareni or the stress sign is falling onto a vowel and that is why the sound of that particular vowel is higher and the rest and the pronunciation is coming let's also learn about their meaning confieta means toffee firma means firm philosopher means philosopher professor means professor and alpha vit means alphabet all right let's go ahead and look at these new words once again before we do and understand the meaning of these new words i would like to recommend you all to note these words in your notebook so that you can also prepare your small vocabulary and you can use these new words and expression in your own simple sentences so now let's pay attention to these new words dialogue stadion ajin jiwan jaja gijia nijelia so the first one is dialogue means dialogue then stadion means stadium ajin means one jiwan means sofa jaja means uncle gijia means where and nijelia means week if you pay attention to this particular list of words we also have jaja and in the previous part we had chocha so chocha means aunt and jaja means uncle you can also add this into the list of relatives and you can also talk about your family and use these two new words all right let's go go ahead and look at these new words we have niyat niyaba miyod mitro miasta these are certain other words which you have just seen that some of the words like niyat can also be used very often especially with da da means yes niyat means no for example you can use in any day to day communication niyat for saying no niaba which is the second word means sky meod means honey miasta means place and mitro means metro here you can also see that some of the words which have been borrowed from many other languages of the world are being used in russian such is the case of the letter and the word where we have mitro so mitro which means metro is a borrowed word all right now let's go ahead and look at these new words we have ani kniga mir and miasa so ani means day kniga means book mir means word it can also be used as piece depending upon the context and miasa means meat okay now let's go ahead and look at some of the very important words which we use in our day to day communication a bed means lunch belly means white aspirant means research scholar literatura means literature vetcher means wind wilka means folk atviet means answer varchira means flat and bibliotheca means library so some of the words like bibliotheca universitet aspirant class urok auditoria skola ruchka karandash bumaga parthel these are certain words which can also be used 
if we talk about our school or university we shall be having a very long discussion about such other text where we will be having situation based dialogues in a dedicated module all right so let's go ahead and look at a few more such words which are used in our day to day communication the words are the first one leta les bilet ili sleva samalyot लेतम दलिको निदलिको रैदम लिको एंड सेला लेट्स लर्न द मीनिंग ऑफ दीज वर्ड्स नाउ लेत मीन्स समर लेस मीन्स फॉरेस्ट बिलियत मीन्स टिकट इली मीन्स और स्लेवा मीन्स ऑन द लेफ्ट इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द प्रीवियस मॉड्यूल वी हैव डन स्प्रावा means on the right so you also learning about the directions so please remember and for convenience please note them down in your notebook and use them in your own sentences so the next one is samalyot samalyot means aircraft letam which means in the summer the liko means far nidaliko means not far rayadam it's nearby Likwa means easy, and Sela means village. However, for village, we also use a word Jirebnya. So you can have Sela as well as Jirebnya for village. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at these new words. We have Vecher, Visna, Miasa, Mishnuwe, Tiatr, Literatur, or Pamitnik. and china so in these words we have wager visna miasa misnoi here we have miasa and misnoi miasa is a noun misnoi is an adjective theater theater it's a very famous and important word means theater you must have heard about bolshoi theater the bolshoi theater in moscow so you will also be learning about these important buildings in your dedicated modules till then you can also keep them in your notebooks and use them in your sentences literatura and pamitnik and scena so let's go ahead and look at a few more such important concepts now we are going to talk about endings So first let's pronounce the endings of certain other important words adjectives nouns verbs etc So we have the ending of the nouns endings of the verbs and endings of certain other concepts The ending is a te and soft sign e te and soft sign ye te and soft sign ach ich et now let's listen and pronounce and compare these different sounds tolka skolka brat brach olga dolga drug druzya all right this exercise is specially done in the case so that you prepare yourself in advance for certain other different combinations of sounds and you pronounce it properly when we are going to conjugate the russian verbs now let's go ahead and look at certain words first we have words like slavar chitraj match stachya and pamch Let's learn the meaning of these new words. Slavar means dictionary. Chitraj means notebook. Match means mother. Stachya means article, and pamich means memory. All right. Now let's go ahead and look at these new words. 
портфель, писатель, преподаватель, соль, рубль, гость. Here, now let's learn the meaning of these new words. Портфель means briefcase. Писатель means writer. Преподаватель means teacher, lecturer, professor. You can use for преподаватель. However, in Russian we have specific terms for teacher, учитель. For professor we use professor. We can also use преподаватель. Sol is for salt. Ruble is very important term. It means ruble, the Russian currency, which you will use if you go to Russia. And гость, which means guest. So, I would like to recommend you all to use these different letters, different words and certain other combinations which we have just used in your day-to-day -day communication, not only to understand it properly, but use it in actual terms with your family and friends so that you have a good grip over the language. I would also like you to look into the Russian dictionary the meaning of the words as well as their gender and use with adjectives. This exercise is going to help you a lot in order to have certain level of confidence for communicating in Russian day to day. All right, now let's go ahead and look at a few expressions. As you know that it is very important in Russian to communicate in that particular language so that whenever you are having greetings or you're talking to a Russian, they should understand properly. So we have certain expressions with us like Dobri Jian, Kashdi Jian, Pazna Komsies, Balshoy Spasiba. So when we say good afternoon or good day, we say Dobri Jian. When we say every day, we use the expression Kashdi Jian. When we say meet, let me introduce you to Pazna Komsies. And when you say thank you very much or thank you so much, you say спасибо. Okay, that is why if you pay attention to the ending Dobri Jen. Jen, masculine gender, that is why the ending of Dobri is Ui Ikratki. Likewise in Kashdi Jen and in Balshoy спасибо because спасибо ends with O. That is why the ending of Balchoy is ending with Ye. Okay, you will be learning precisely how to identify and use these concepts in your upcoming modules. And for the time being, I would like to recommend you all to note them down in your notebooks so you have a fair idea about the greetings in Russian. All right, now let's go ahead and understand the meaning of certain other words. Abhivlenye, abhiyakt. So, abhivlenye means announcement and abhiyakt means object. As you remember that in Russian we have two signs. The one is hard sign, the second one is soft sign. Here you can see hard sign has been used in both the words. Abhivlenye and Abhiyakt. Okay, so for certain letters, you can also note these words down and you can also find out many other such words in the dictionary. All right, now let's go ahead and look at a few new Russian words and expressions. We have palto, tolka, skolka, pravilna, kultura. So palto, it ending with O. So all these words except kultura are ending with o. So you can use a neuter gender adjective with palto. Okay, so balshoy palto, big overcoat. So before that, let's learn the meaning of these words first and then discuss about them further. We have palto means overcoat, tolka means only. Kolka means how much, pravilna means correct and kultura which means culture. 
so accordingly you can also make your sentence depending upon the noun and its ending okay now let's go ahead here we have certain other words with us like mini machilna film bolshoi pismo and druzia now let's learn the meaning of these words mini machilna means carefully film means fill and if you want to say movie then we need to say kino film bolshoi means big as you know that this is an adjective you can use it with any noun which belongs to the masculine gender like bolshoi dom so accordingly you have to identify this word where it will fit then we have pismo means letter then we have druzia and as you know that pismo means letter and druzia means friends so in case of druzia i would like to tell you that this is a plural of drug drug means friend so with the help of these certain words which we have done in this module i would like to suggest you all to make a list of such words so that you can use them in your own simple sentences we will be discussing about many such other concepts in our next module thank you